Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. Today, I'm gonna show you 20 of my favorite apps divided in seven categories. Communication, productivity, creativity and design, utilities, personal development, self-care, and music. So let's ramble. Hold up, face go well when I pull up. They all on me like I want some. So this is my first video of the new year. And let me just start by saying a big, big thank you to all of you guys for helping me get to 5K subscribers. I mean, that is just insane. I started my channel at the end of April, 2020, and my goal was to hit 1000 subscribers in my first year. And now, not even nine months later, we're at 5,000 and counting. I still can't believe that people actually like my content enough to subscribe for more. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, enough of that, let's get to business. One of my first videos, which is now actually my biggest video, is the one on 20 must-have apps for the iPad in 2020. So what better way to start the new year than to update you guys with a fresh must-have iPad apps video for 2021. Like I said, I've divided them in seven categories, so let's start with communication. So in last year's video, I told you guys I start my day with Moleskine Journey, which I'll get back to in a second, but then I realized that's a lie because I definitely check my messages first when I'm still in bed half asleep. The app I use the most is Telegram. Now, I use other apps too, like WhatsApp, but the iPad app for that is basically just an extension of your phone and you can't use it without your phone. Telegram, on the other hand, is a standalone app, which is very similar to WhatsApp, but totally independent from your phone, and it works across platforms. I love that. I can just start messaging on my phone, continue on my iPad, and even my Mac has a dedicated Telegram app installed. I can definitely recommend. Next, we have two apps in our productivity category. The first one is the app I use first when I actually sit down to start my day, and that is, in fact, Moleskine Journey. I know I mentioned this app last year as well, but it's constantly evolving and it's still at the basis of my entire productivity system. So Moleskine is basically a journal and a planner rolled into one. It is modular, so you can choose the habits that make most sense to you, and you can decide the order in which they're listed. I start with determining the mood I'm in every morning, then I write a few lines in my journal, just some thoughts I might have and some ideas I came up with in the shower, whatever. Then I move on to my gratitude list, where I write down some of the things I'm grateful for. Now, the power of this exercise cannot be underestimated. Instead of focusing on all the crap that's going on, listing all the good things in your life makes you feel grateful and just generally happier. Once I've done that, I put my goals for the day, like what do I want to achieve? Try not to make that list too long, challenge yourself, but keep it realistic to avoid disappointment when you don't manage to hit your goals at the end of the day. Then there's my planner that conveniently takes all the items out of my calendar and turns them into action items. And then I add whatever items of my own. And then at the end of the day, I journal a little bit more. I find that this helps evaluate the day and it also sets you up nicely for the next day. The next productivity app I wanna mention is Muse. I discovered it very recently and I love it. It is exactly what I've been looking for. It's essentially a whiteboard for your tablet that allows you to drag, drop, and copy whatever you want in a very intuitive manner. I use it mainly as an idea board where I just drop notes, images, web links, and I can even draw and scribble however I see fit. Most apps force you to process things in a certain format. Even mind maps usually follow a pretty rigid path. And that is where this app is different because it offers you total creative freedom. Speaking of creative freedom, let's move on to creativity and design with Canva. Canva is one of the most intuitive and straightforward design apps there are. It's kind of like Photoshop or InDesign for people who don't understand Photoshop or InDesign, like me. Having said that, for beginners and even intermediate designers, this app has a lot to offer. I use it for all my YouTube thumbnails. You can do a lot in the free version. And if you pay for the pro version, it has some terrific features like background remover or the magic resize option where Canva makes your design fit any type of social media. There's a link to this app and some of the other apps in the description where you can try them for free. Some of them even offer a discount. 
For more advanced stuff, I can definitely recommend Affinity Photo. Photoshop doesn't have a full-blown iPad app yet, and Affinity Photo is definitely the closest thing to it. Whenever I need to work with layers or I have to do some more complicated removal stuff, then this is the app I turn to. Affinity comes with a good selection of fonts pre-installed, but you can also import your own fonts, and that is where the next apps come in. Have you ever seen a font somewhere like a banner or a commercial? You really like it, but you have no idea what it's called, and now you're trying to describe it in a Google search hoping to find it. Well, forget that, because now we have what the font. See something you like? Simply open the app, snap a picture, and it will distinguish all of the fonts it sees, tap on the one you like, and it will find you all the fonts online that resemble that font. I can't tell you how much time this has saved me looking for fonts. So now you know what font you like and you want to download it. Do yourself a favor and download any font for iPad. It's basically a search engine that uses all the popular font sites on the web like the font and it gives you access to all of their catalogs. Once you find the font you like, you can use the app to download and install it. It's simple, easy, I highly recommend it. Next up is Sketches. Sketches is basically just another drawing app. I just really like the feel of the tools it offers. I don't use it for anything special, just the occasional doodle. There's just something about drawing that helps me relax. By the way, I don't like drawing on the naked glass of the iPad, it gets all slippery, so I have a paper-like screen protector on it, providing a little bit of drag. Fun fact, my first YouTube video was on how to apply that screen protector and I still have that same one on my iPad today. Link in the description if you're thinking about picking one up. Another fun little app is Toon Camera, which does exactly what the name suggests. It makes your photos and videos look like they were hand-drawn. You can choose between a bunch of different brushes, each one giving your footage a different effect. You can export your creations and use them in different apps as well. And the last app in the design category is IKEA Place. It's the new year, maybe you want to change things up a bit in your house, you have some ideas, but you're not sure what it would look like. Well, this app uses the LiDAR scanner to create an augmented reality image of whatever you're thinking of buying. Let's say I want to buy this Nilfisk lamp slash Bluetooth speaker. I can just walk around my office and drop the lamp anywhere to see what it would look like. It looks amazing and you can get pretty close up to view some of the details as well. Pretty cool. All right, moving on to utilities. First up, there is Flex Widgets. What I like about Flex Widgets is that the widgets are truly customizable. Other well-known apps like Widgetsmith are great, but I find them a little bit limited. Flex Widgets allows you to add anything from the weather to information about your health. You can even create interactable drawings. I mean, it doesn't get much more custom than that. And of course, you can add your own photos. I keep things fairly clean. Just one of my favorite pictures as a background I put the weather to see if I can go for a run or fly my drone and the day of the week as well as the actual date because pandemic struggles are real and half the time I forget what day it is. The next utility app is actually a screensaver. The iPad doesn't really have any and that's where Flurry comes in. It looks like the screensavers you're used to on your Mac or your PC. You can pick a style you want and even make a few tweaks. And lastly, in the utilities category, there's NordVPN. I mean, the need for a good VPN these days goes without saying. There's a whole bunch of them out there and I've tried many different ones, but I always circle back to Nord. It's not the cheapest one, but it has this really slick UI. You can just tap on the country of your choice, hit connect, and it will appear as if you were there. Now, most of us won't be using a lot of public Wi-Fi these days, so the protection element might not be as interesting, but we're definitely staying home more and watching more streaming services like Netflix. These services offer different content in different countries. A VPN client like Nord can give you access to foreign catalogs as well. Just be sure to play by the rules. On to the next category, personal development. All right, so we're stuck at home much more than we're used to, and most of us have a little more time on our hands, seeing that we're not commuting to work and all that stuff. Now, we can go complain about that, but I'd much rather make pandemic lemonade of the lemons we're currently given. So I'm using my time to learn new stuff, like getting better at editing videos. Probably the most well-known place to do that is Skillshare. No, they're not sponsoring this video. I know, right? But I do really think they do great stuff. You can find a ton of great free videos on YouTube that teach you stuff. 
but sometimes you just need a little more information or you're looking for a specific course, Skillshare is a great place for that. They're currently offering two weeks of free premium. There's a link in the description. Feel free to check it out. Skillshare offers you access to all courses at a fixed rate as long as you're a member. If you don't like the subscription model, you should try Udemy. Udemy is very similar to Skillshare, offering lots of online courses, but unlike Skillshare, you can decide which course you want and buy them. And then once you've paid for a course, you own it. I guess it's a matter of preference and it depends on how many courses you like to do. Personally, I'm more drawn to Skillshare's model because if you do more than one course a month, a premium subscription is already worth it. Another great way to learn new things is by listening to audiobooks. I'm not a big reader, my mind tends to wander, and I take in much more information when I'm listening. Plus, you can listen to audiobooks anywhere, on a run, in your car, whatever, and I find that very efficient. What I like about Audible is that it offers a premium membership whereby you pay a fixed amount per month which entitles you to one credit. And you can use that credit on any book even if it's much more expensive than what you pay for the credit. Of course, you can always purchase more books when you run out of credits and you don't need to worry if you don't use your credit in a given month because you can just take it with you into the next month. Audible is currently offering a 30-day free trial. There's a link in the description. Another useful way of using your extra time is learning a new language. And this doesn't need to be tedious or difficult. Duolingo is a super simple app that uses gamification to make learning a new language fun. You can do it for as little as five minutes a day, it feels like a game, and you're actually learning a new language. Just give it a try, it's free. Now, doing all this productive stuff is great, but sometimes you just need to chill. The next three categories are all about giving yourself a break. First, self-care. I know it makes me sound like a hippie, but do yourself a favor and try meditation. We're going from one Zoom call into the next, forgetting to ever slow down and take a deep breath every now and then. There's a lot of great apps that can guide you in meditation. Lately, I've been liking an app called Oak. It's designed beautifully and it offers a whole host of exercises, from simple breathing to meditation and even sleep exercises. You can choose between longer programs or shorter ones if you don't have a lot of time, but you need to relax a little. Of course, you can also chill by playing a game. We all know Angry Birds, but have you ever played it in your living room? Kind of like the IKEA app, the game uses the iPad's LiDAR scanner to make it seem like the pig fortress is in the middle of the room. Point your camera at the fortress, yank on that catapult, and bam. And finally, if you just don't want to do anything, listen to some good old music. I use several services like Spotify and Apple Music, but definitely give Amazon Music a try because their catalog keeps getting bigger and they're currently offering three months of free premium. I mean, that's pretty long. Just use the link in the description. All right, guys, if you found an app or two you didn't know about, give the video a thumbs up. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, a sub to the channel would be awesome. And let me know in the comments which apps you really like that I didn't cover. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.